you are traveling all, to all parts of the world. You've been to, I think, the United States, South America, Africa, Europe, and all, all these areas during COVID time and trying to figure out what those countries are going through and how, how this pandemic is impacting them in, in a different way to those cultures, but we have similar problems. How do you compare that particular information with what's happening here in Sri Lanka? How do you see Sri Lanka at the moment? I think in, in, in many ways, uh, the countries have gone through a similar experience. Huh? Similar experience in the early days of uncertainty, lack of knowledge, and degree of fear. So many countries went through that. And people sort of thought that after the first wave was over, that maybe it is over. And the second wave came and hit very hard in most of the countries. So in many ways, you see those similarities. But at the same time, the countries have responded also very, very differently. So you will see that you will see that differences also. Of course, in case of Sri Lanka, being in some way an island country, um, in some way was easier to manage the border. Um, when there is a land border, um, mm -hmm. it's slightly more difficult to manage. So in some way, Sri Lanka was in a slightly advantages, advantageous position when there was a wave of border control. Of course, we don't know for sure whether that strategy was very successful or not, but at least at that time, that was the belief that, uh, that the border control played a very, very important role. But one thing I find um, a bit different in Sri Lanka, and of course, with my long association with, the, with Sri Lanka has been that sense of solidarity in the country is very strong. I mean, we saw that in every country, but I think Sri Lanka had that history of solidarity, especially what we saw during tsunami. Uh, when the country went through that very tragic disasters with devastation of life and livelihoods and economy, but the country came together. The international community came together. And that solidarity to help the people who need the help basically helped the country recover out of that tsunami. And I could see the similar, similar type of solidarity. And I, I was really impressed to see the volunteers of Sri Lankan Red Cross going out, supporting the, the, the police, the security agencies, the hospitals, the schools. And that was a very, very important element of expressing solidarity. And I think that was key uh, in, in, in managing um, the, the, the situation uh, in, in Sri Lanka. The, I think the, the, the other aspect, uh, what I feel um, very important for any country, uh, but a country like Sri Lanka, which is of course, um, the tourism is a very important mm -hmm. part of, of life in the country. So balancing between the health measures and the health safety versus the running the economy uh, is a very, very difficult balance. And I think that Sri Lanka has more or less managed to maintain that balance. Uh, it's good to see the tourists are a little bit back in the, in, in the city. Um, I could see the in the restaurants and, and the hotels. So bringing that balance is, is very, very important. And why I'm saying this is, of course, we look the COVID as a health issue. But the impact of COVID on non-health issue is very significant. Of course, the issue around the, the, the socioeconomic mm -hmm. impact, the issues on the families and the, and the relations, issues on the mental health, uh, issues on education of the, of, of the children are very significant issues. So for the decision makers, Getting that balance right, which I know is not very easy, but is extremely critical for the overall development of the country. And I could see Sri Lanka trying its best to bring that balance.